Today we're taking the show on the road as we look for mobile filmmaking at NAB. You know you're in the right place when you see the slot machines in the airport. By the way, this entire episode was shot on an iPhone XS Max and an Insta360 ONE X camera. So we picked up our rental car. Dropped our bags at the hotel. Then we had to go say hi to the king, of course. And then later we hit the strip, heading to a party in downtown Las Vegas. It was a creator meetup sponsored by Film Convert, Whipster, and Filmic Pro. There were quite a few people there. My main goal was to meet the Filmic Pro guys in person, which I did. And there was also a lot of YouTube creators there, which I didn't expect. So I talked to Caleb Pike from DSLR Video Shooter, been watching his channel forever. Now I didn't get to meet all these guys, but I did see them at this party. So the next morning we got up, drove back down the strip, and then arrived at the convention center for NAB. Now if you've never been to NAB or don't know what it is, it stands for National Association of Broadcasters. And more or less it's a show about gear, new gear, video gear, anything to do with TV or film production and post-production. So you'll see high-end gear that you may never work with in your entire career. And all the way down to more everyday things like lights and microphones and that kind of thing. And this year there was a big presence from mobile video and filmmaking vendors. 4 companies went in together to create Mobile Row, Luma Touch. Filmic Pro, Narbox, and Rhino. I'll put links in the description if you don't know about these companies. So first I want to find out what's new and what's coming soon. I'm Terry Morgan, the co-founder of LumaTouch. So what we're showing at, uh, at LumaTouch is LumaFusion with uh, six tracks of uh, 4K running real time uh, with effects on all tracks, plus six more tracks of audio. And also we've integrated with Frame.io now. So uh, what you can do is instantly see your Frame.io media, see the comments, and reply to comments all, all within LumaFusion with a full integration. You don't even have to download the media. You can just do all that right in the app. And it's really cool. So then you can we just drag it to the timeline, and then we download that section. And we're showing that we have professional editing and uh, a lot of new features that are coming out uh, in version 2.0. Version 2.0 will be coming in the near future, later this spring, I'm told. Next up, I went to see Filmic Pro. Two big things are for both iOS and Android, we have released a Mobi integration. So this is the Cinema Robot and it's incredibly deep. We give you access to our main shooting modes, auto, full manual controls directly from the gimbal. But beyond that, this is the first gimbal where we let you adjust the motors and the window of the gimbal directly from the control. So this was designed so you can start a recording, you don't have to tap the screen during any part of your recording process. So that's the big news on iOS and Android. And if I look this, the big news on iOS only right now, but coming later to Android, is um, Filmic Pro has released an audio app, Filmic Audio. And what this is designed to do is, it's a great standalone field recorder, first of all. Uncompressed, whatever sample rate you like, it's super nice and easy, simple to use, manual input gain. But the killer feature is, it's gonna integrate with Filmic Pro. So think of this as a wireless microphone, connect anything into it, so it acts as a second device with Filmic Pro, slip it into a back pocket with a lav mic. When you finish your session, it's going to wirelessly sync that audio back to your Filmic Pro device, switch out the onboard audio, and sync your high-quality 
uncompressed audio for you right in the Filmic library so there's nothing else for you to do. So you'll have your onboard audio, we'll never actually completely delete that. So you'll have that, you'll have your external mic, however you can use an, the inbuilt mics or connect a nice external one. It's recording locally so it's super high quality, you don't have to worry about like a wireless connection being broken. And either as soon as you finish recording or at the end of the day when you've got 50 clips, just one tap, it's going to bring all that audio across automatically and then sync it for you and switch it out within Filmic Pro ready to publish. So beyond Mobile Row, other vendors were showing off a lot of mobile filmmaking gear too. In the past, this was more of a CES thing, consumer electronics. But now it's starting to trickle into NAB, which I think is great. It's so inspiring to see what's coming ahead, you know? The fact that this whole mobile filmmaker pavilion was kind of set up with all these dope companies that are doing kind of things to integrate with each other. It's just proof that the future is in mobile filmmaking, mobile editing, and taking everything to, you know, to, to the next level. I got to chat with Henny too, very cool guy. Check out his channel, he does a lot of great LumaFusion stuff. And then Ryan Conley drew a crowd at the Filmic Pro booth. He did a chat about making your first short film or feature film. Very cool to see traditional filmmakers embracing mobile and DIY methods. And that's of course what we do on this channel all the time. A little bit later I also did a chat in the Filmic Pro booth. I talked about mixing higher end professional cameras like RED and Blackmagic with mobile technology. So a funny thing about shooting 360 video, you know it's kind of a shotgun approach, you capture everything, even stuff you don't realize. We'll come back to this here in a minute. So with Filmic Pro and Luma Touch being at NAB, does that mean more professionals are embracing mobile filmmaking? I'm Neil Barham, I'm the founder and CEO of Filmic Incorporated and we make Filmic Pro. I would actually say that this is a trial run that is basically based around that central question, is mobile ready for prime time? And I think in certain select cases with enterprising individuals, it definitely is. There are probably eight Hollywood famous directors, uh, Steven Soderbergh, Claude Lelouch, uh, Olivia Wilde, uh, Michelle Gondry, uh, Peter Chan, Zack Snyder, and I'm probably forgetting, they've all shot with iPhones and Filmic Pro and love the process. And so actually I think the love the process is a really important thing. The fact that Soderbergh shot two films with an iPhone and Filmic Pro shows that it isn't just a novelty act, that there's something else to the process that yields stuff that maybe a more expensive camera would not. What you're seeing here is four companies that have come together in a mobile filmmaking pavilion to show that there's enough companies making professional editing and professional shooting and and other uh, gear for mobile uh, to really have a full ecosystem that is a professional system. Look at some of our customer stories that we have at our booth. Uh, we have Angelo Ciaccio who's traveled the world for 300 days with only what he can carry on his back, which was a nice camera and LumaFusion to edit. Um, so he would edit in the most remote parts of the world at night in his tent, and then when he got back to somewhere with a uh, link, you know, connection, he would he would upload the episode. So the, he's like amazing, you know, filmmaker that's doing just the kind of work that people dream about doing, and he's all doing it with mobile. So what I would love to see and have advocated for for a handful of years is a slightly thicker iPhone with a larger sensor and 10-bit uh, ProRes. That, I think, would be the earth-shattering move that would send tremors through the industry. But I think right now, if you have talent, you can achieve unbelievable, beautiful results on mobile. I think that's a great way to put it. And I gotta say, I'm really looking forward to that iPhone with ProRes. NAB 2020? I don't know. Maybe. So quick story, I was heading over to the Aperture booth shooting 360 video and I didn't notice that that's Matty Hapoya and Potato Jet in front of him right there. But I don't think Potato Jet loves the YouTube fame or he's a pretty shy guy. Now remember, I'm shooting 360 video so I'm looking here at the Aperture booth. I don't know what's going on behind me. 
He's looking at his camera, trying to look busy, like, oh, uh, I'm going to adjust some settings here. I don't really want to talk to these guys. I'm sure they're nice, but I, uh, I don't know. I don't really want to be here. I want to go look at more gear. I may want to go get some lunch. Although the food wasn't very good, that's probably why he's frowning here. And then he looks back over at Maddie here, and he's like, oh, he's still talking. And then he makes his escape. But I found this really humorous. I did not know I was shooting him until I got the post-production. Another reason 360 video is cool, you never know when you'll run into famous YouTubers. By the way, great YouTubers, great YouTube channels. Check them out if you haven't already. Overall, had a great time at NAB. Met some cool people, saw some cool gear. And really excited to see where mobile filmmaking is headed. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Definitely check out the links in the description. Please like, subscribe, and we will see you in the next video.